I have a bit of a maker story. I did industrial design and I spent a lot of weeks using one of these. That is a Harrison lathe. Uh, and I was searching for it. I also found this and I actually spent a lot of time on that very model. Not that particular exact one, but exactly the same model. I also spent a lot of time making models on a miller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so much so I was known as Gil the Mill. Uh, we used to use Alias back in the day before it was even wavefront on silicon graphics machines and at best we might have done something as cool as this from a Finnish company. Uh, and it was interesting because actually what was appealing to me is the be able to, ability to use a computer to make things quicker and also rapid prototyping was really interesting for us. We used to talk a lot about stereo lithography to so much of an extent that when people started to talk about um, 3D printing, I was like, what's that? Even though I've been aware of it for quite a long time. And it, I, you know, 3D printing is a much better phrase, especially when you get your head around it. So look, that's enough about me. It's 2013 after all. Um, so this is Anil. He's our chief executive here in the UK, the boss man. And um, I have an imaginary conversation that I'm going to have with him about why we should have a 3D printer, which I hope you'll find interesting, perhaps entertaining. So we need a 3D printer. Sounds great, why not? Uh, it's going to make cool things. You're like, what? And so we've seen a lot of kind of lo-fi heads, people who've kind of printed at various exhibitions I've been to, that's not for everything. Um, we, could, we love unicorn, so we can have unicorn when people arrive at reception, that could be personalised. The problem is that's quite a lot of unicorns and uh, how long will they take to print? The person will have left the building by the time they kind of uh, get the unicorn, so maybe think again. Um, we have these little awards, we could kind of get personalised awards for everyone every month, which is great, that's quite an interesting approach. The boss likes that, but you know, wants to be more excited. So, you know, actually we have used 3D printer before. Oh really? I do tell. And so this is the RGB, RGD toolkit. You download this uh, model from the internet, not particularly uh, complex. It's uh, for those in industrial design background, it's a simple extrusion with some additional elements in there. Um, and it allows you to uh, put a connect controller and seat a, SLR, a digital SLR camera on top of it. And you feed them both into your laptop and it allows you to make films like this. So you're mashing it up. So it's a nice example of mashed up technologies. The model is free, we downloaded it and then sent it off. It cost about 100 quid to make the model, so that was a good use of it. Okay, I get it, but you know, that's about not very future facing, is it? Now, how can we really help change our clients' businesses? Uh, we can try to be more creative. So, you know, when we do pitches, often we will actually prototype things on screen, so that's a mobile phone app, but that's kind of example, kind of uh, website, etc. But, you know, what about physical products? So, one of the things that we actually have talked about, I haven't done, which is a, a criminal. Fence, obviously, is that uh, you can have your mobile phone that could communicate to an Arduino board, which then actually, through a piece of printed uh, uh, machinery, turns on and controls your coffee machine. And the benefit of that is it's great at actually demonstrating this concept of an internet thing without hacking the printer. And so that's a great way of augmenting uh, existing devices. And you can imagine about how that uh, can be taken further. Uh, into a number of ways. So actually, from the switches and mechanisms that you're doing is kind of hacking prototyping, to actually the core structure to hold these things together, to you know, the actual thing or the enclosure itself. So you know, the internet of things is something that's very exciting for us, but we're kind of thinking about what can those things be. You know, for us, it's very much about a, squ a screen and an Arduino board, what's a physical object. So uh, what does anyone think about this? Well, first of all, idea hackers, anyone that uh, kind of looks at this site? A few nods. But this is, I think, an, quite an interesting approach that when you have clients and we're dealing with their like, digital channels, is to kind of start to bring in the idea of having physical downloadable models and like, additional hacks that you can start to kind of layer on top of the things that they're doing. Um, so you can imagine that it now comes with printable models. Uh, and I think that is pretty exciting for a lot of the clients that we've got. I think emotionally you start to think about, must get a 3D printer, but the reasons that we heard from Ivan actually is at what level do you pitch it? And this is obviously, you know, something to learn about and understand why you would do it what's a business model. But I started to think, actually, it's rather like a 2D printer, for me, in a simplistic way. Is that what's the size of print required? That has quite a big, dictates quite a lot of this. What's the material you're going to print with? Uh, there's lots of different qualities, the ability to use one type or the different types. Uh, what's the finish you want and what's the speed? So actually, in many ways, a lot of the key attributes you would choose when you're a 2D printer still apply to this. I still know, don't know which one, but, you know, maybe you can uh, kind of give me some tips. Um, but 